Hello and welcome to An Academy, the one-stop solution for an English medium UPSC civil services aspirant. After receiving for years multiple requests, emails from my students for a history optional course, which was comprehensive, which was done with the right expertise, and which was done in a time-bound fashion. Today, I stand in front of you with two purposes in mind. First, I have the immense pleasure of announcing that I will be launching a history optional course on the Unacademy app, which will cover the whole syllabus in a 360 hours program. And I will tell you what are the basic nitty gritties of this course, how we are going to go about it, what is history optional. And the second purpose of this session is to understand the syllabus, how does history optional come in vis a vis other options in that regard. And last but not the least, the book list and how you can also enroll this course. Now, before we talk about the nitty gritties, the salient features of the course itself, let us first understand what gives me the competence to teach for history optional. Because when it comes to optionals and specifically history, the make and break, the difference between 200 and 300 marks is how you express yourself and therefore how you understand the subject itself. For the past decade, I have been developing the skill set and understanding, which I intend to transfer to you so that you can make sure that your dream with regards to becoming an IS officer via history optional is achieved. I've done my BA honors, my MA and my MPhil in history. I'm doing my PhD right now. And throughout my graduation, post-graduation and MPhil, I was a university topper, the rank one with regards to a history candidate scoring the maximum marks. I have in a way the world record for scoring more than 300 marks out of 500, a better than first division when we talk about history as a subject in Delhi University. I've done my BA honors from Sri Venkateshwara College, then my master's from St. Stephen's and my MPhil and PhD from the Department of History, Delhi University. Now, whilst doing all of this, I also got an opportunity to appear for the NET examination, National Eligibility Test for assistant professors. And as one of the youngest assistant professors after clearing NET and JRF for four times in history itself, I taught in Delhi University for five years. And whilst teaching in one of the most prestigious colleges such as the Hindu College, for example, HGTB Khalsa, or the different colleges such as College of Vocational Studies or Satyavati, the fact was that I interacted with numerous students who always wanted guidance with regards to UPSC firm. And that made me enter this area, this arena, where I make sure that my understanding, my hard effort into understanding history as a subject which is more than just facts is used by you to clear the examination. Whilst doing all of this, I'm also now going to be author of two books. There's already one book which is in the market, which is by Pearson Publications under the UGC Paper 2 history book in that regard. And by end of this year, I will also be the author of a history simplified book under McGraw Hill Publications, a book which is going to be a one-stop solution and will basically end this six to seven book issue in history. That is going to be, in that sense, the Lakshmi Kant of history. And that is the intended purpose with ancient medieval art and culture in modern India in the same book in that regard, negating the need for multiple books. I have also traveled the world representing India at different international conferences and seminars, specifically in Senegal for India, uh, for Harvard University. And throughout this journey, I have understood one thing, which is that History is more than what you actually look at it. And history optional in that regard could be a game changer for your preparation because of its advantages over other optional in that regard. Now that you know who I am, now it would be a good time to understand what is the course highlight and how are we going to cover this history optional course. And then we'll go into the syllabus and book list. Now, when we talk about the course structure, first we need to understand what is the structure of history as an optional because there are two papers. So, in paper one, we have ancient and medieval. 
and in paper 2 we have modern and world history now ironically all of these topics intersect with gs and that is the beauty of history option in that regard in the ancient portion we have 60 marks straight for a section called mapping and it is one of the most objective portions of this of this option in that regard and thereafter you get subjective questions ranging between 150 to 300 words now based on this idea the course which we are launching is very very comprehensive when it covers everything so it is going to be 360 hours which is not not a lot but is enough to basically understand and answer any questions which are coming for the past 10 to 12 years within that we will have 165 hours of paper 1 which is basically ancient and medieval and 165 hours of paper 2 which is modern and world history it is world history where history option becomes a totally different cup of tea from gs because world history syllabus expands we will also have a 30 hour session a 30 hour session which basically is going to be just for mapping because mapping is a very scoring and can easily get you out of that 60 close to 50 55 marks making it automatically 300 plus in the total count out of 500 more than that more than that within 150 days we will cover the whole history syllabus because when it comes to optionals it has to be done within a certain time frame and it has to be done before you go for prelims orientation and therefore the time matters the time matters and we will have 2.5 hour classes on the unacademy app on 22nd april we are starting our foundation course which is history basics and thereafter we'll go into the proper 360 hour program with 2.5 hours classes which is two and a half hours now what are the other features here the first is that in class itself we can interact through one to one calling and therefore any doubt you have can be covered within the class to not just typing but through a one to one interaction more than that we have a test series which has been inbuilt into the program every sunday there will be multiple questions which will be given to you as subjective questions and they will be evaluated and they will be not be evaluated by, by a random person but me I will be evaluating each and every copy when it comes to history option students and more than that we will make sure that answer writing is always an important emphasis in history optional it is about expressing yourself and therefore answer writing practice mapping and the test series and evaluation program is also inbuilt to it now when we talk about optionals there's also one more issue there are multiple books for example when we talk about the book list there are total 11 books which you may have to read to clear this examination to cover what we call as history optional as a program however i have negated that for you i will be giving after every session on a daily basis notes these will be typed proper pdf form which can be printed by you and these notes will be out of all the re relevant sources for example if we are discussing neolithic paleolithic or for example Indus Valley civilization from al basham to rs sharma to pinder singh which is the staple book here to even other economic and what we call as social angles which come out of articles i will collate everything for you so that you don't have to run after books i always believe that if you are in a guided program and you still have to read books and it makes no sense so you will get 150 plus different handouts which will cover everything in that whatever we do in the two and a half hours we will exactly keep it in that sense and everything then be collated as one resource and the beauty of history optional is those resources never change once you've taken it thereafter there is no dynamic portion so therefore that is your end and final resource you don't have to run around for di different and multiple topics or multiple sources in that regard over and above that over and above that we will make sure we will make sure that we will have specific answer writing sessions in which i will be hand holding and we will basically write answers in the class and therefore we will be able to inculcate and develop 
a certain critical sense when it comes to answer writing. So, the third question, the first question was, why should I and who am I? What gives me the expertise? Second is, what is the course itself? Now comes the question, how are we different? How are we different? How is this course different? And the answer to that question is, when I say 360 hours, nothing less, nothing more. We will cover everything within this time frame and we will not exceed, take extra classes or waste your time. That is one thing where my agenda is very straight. If I'm telling you 360 hours, I will make sure in an efficient manner, we cover everything so that you can concentrate on mains and prelims equally whilst optional being your main anchor. Second, as I told you, you don't have to refer to books. You don't have to go to multiple sources. You don't actually have to worry about where should I read what from. As it is, you're understanding everything in class with me. But when it comes to resources, I'm giving you all relevant sources in that 150 plus notes section. And therefore, you don't have to worry about books. Further, further, a lot of courses generally integrate mapping together and don't understand that mapping is a very important section. So I'm dealing with mapping separately. And when it comes to answer writing, I am going to evaluate it. I'm not giving you random evaluators. I'm evaluating it for you. I have also, I will give you the link for the Telegram channel itself. On the Telegram channel, which is history optional by Abhishek Mishra, sir, I'll give you the QR code in the end. Once you join the Telegram channel, I will give you an opportunity to upload all of your answers into it. There will be a separate one, separate test series, which is going to happen within the Unacademy app also. But you can also send any question you practice to me directly and I will evaluate it and send it to you in that Telegram channel. And last but not the least is that answer writing, evaluation before UPSC evaluates you, we want to evaluate you first. And therefore, I will make sure that we cover everything automatically and we also are able to practice answers because answer writing is extremely important and constructive criticism over those answer writing may be the difference between you clearing with 250 and 300. So looking at the overall outlook, I have the pleasure and it gives me a lot of satisfaction to say that history optional online course, which is going to happen for everybody on the Unacademy app, is now going to be available on the app itself. All the links with regards to the batch, with regards to the Telegram channel, with regards to the special sessions, which I'm going to take in the next two to three days are also given in the description box. But when you do buy the course, you have to use a code called AMOPT, which is Abhishek Mishra optional AMOPT. By using this course, uh, code, this will basically reduce the course fees by 50%. And this code is going to be very, very important for you when you will be being onboarded into the program. So do remember this code AMOPT because this will allow you to get a significant reduction in prices of the course of the fees. And further, it will also help you in identifying history optional as a program. So now that we've understood what was the first purpose that I have, I am launching a course with 360 hours, two and a half hours class, with 150 plus notes on the Unacademy app. Now, let us try to understand that how do we choose an optional and why you should choose an optional? Because this is a standard question which comes to a lot of students or comes through in every session. How do I choose an optional? Now, when we talk about optionals, there are, there's a four axis rule. The first axis is specialization. It is called specialization. Then it is time and effort. The third is dynamic portions. And the fourth is intersectionality. Now, when we talk about specialization, what do I mean by that is that there are two types of optionals. The first optional, which is basically based on specializations, is that you have maths, statistics, economics, physics, chemistry, 
दीज आर वेरी वेरी स्पेसिफिक एंड वेरी वेरी स्पेशलाइज ऑप्शन इन द सेंस दैट नॉट एवरीबडी कैन टेक इट नॉट एवरीबडी कैन टेक इट दो मे बी स्कोरिंग बट नॉट एवरीबडी कैन टेक इट मैथ्स इज द मोस्ट स्कोरिंग बट इट इज वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज इट इज वेरी एक्सप्लिसिटली मैंशन इन द यूपीएससी सिलेबस दट ऑप्शनल आर ऑलवेज ऑनर्स लेवल so you should be at the bsc level when it comes to physics chemistry or mathematics and ba honors when it comes to economics for example the second type of optional is which can be done by everybody which are generic options for example history psir geography anthropology sociology now here you don't need the expertise because with a proper guided program you can come to the level to write good answers and clear this examination with a very good rank now now when we talk about specialization history falls into the category where you really don't need to worry if i have a background if i don't have a background as it is for gs you have to cover the history portion so this brings us to the intersectionality part see there are optionals which may be very interesting for example philosophy but they don't align with the upsc syllabus we are talking about the prelim syllabus we are talking about the main syllabus and when it comes to prelims and main syllabus there are certain options which don't align to some level anthropology to some level sociology to most of philosophy however history psir geography but specifically history there's 100% intersectionality which is that the photocopy of the main syllabus and prelims syllabus together basically becomes at a different level maybe if prelims and mains is here the optional is here it's exactly the same it's exactly the same so basically with one effort you get two outputs and effort and smart study matters in upsc and therefore here the specialization aspect is also added with the fact that if you choose an optional it should intersect if it intersects then by doing one optional course you can automatically cover at least 25% of the syllabus when it comes to prelims and mains further further it is about dynamic portions and time and effort see psir may be very very interesting but it is extremely dynamic which is that every year new judgments philosophy part as it is is quite difficult that ways and over and above that when it comes to other optionals be it pub public ad be it anthro be it sociology there's always something new happening and there's always something with regards to new research or even maybe new forms of judgments new forms of current affairs getting added now in that type of an optional it is always a moving target the problem is you learn something today then the target moves there's some new addition and time and effort concept is that basically if if it takes 9 months 10 months and you can't revise the same optional within the time period between prelims and mains then it is a problem because it could be a very good optional but if you are not able to revise it within 3 months it makes no sense and in that context in that context you get the advantages of history as an optional first one being there is no dynamic portion once you are done with the syllabus it is the end of it and thereafter there is no dynamic portion there is nothing to be added once the notes come to you the 150 notes when they come to you it is end of the story you don't have to add you don't have to subtract there is no dynamic and once you prepared you actually don't have to add anything or even in a way revise it if you are properly or if you actually properly understood the topic which also helps us in this concept that if you don't take history as an optional for example still you have to study history for prelims you have to study ancient medieval modern art and culture for mains you have to study world history post independence and modern india for prelims you have to also study modern india modern india and art and culture both and world history with post independence come in the mains examination it is not that it is a totally prelims area you have to write answers also so either way by hook or crook you have to study history by by taking history as an optional you are basically covering 25% of the prelims syllabus and gs paper 1 you are covering 50% of the syllabus 50% of the syllabus of gs paper 1 is automatically done but more than that history doesn't stop there 
be it gs paper 234 gs paper 2 for example re reorganization land reforms when it comes to the concept of linguistic politics everything has an historical antecedent we do it in post independence gs paper 3 the concept of land reforms the concept of economic planning the concept of anything till 1991 we are covering that under post independence gs paper 4 thinkers part we will do historiography we will do thinkers and therefore that is also covered so in a way when you cover history as an optional you don't have to study history for gs or prelims so half of the work in gs paper 1 25 to 30 percent of your effort, and remember, when you're doing optional, you're doing it at a very high level. No question evades you. And if you add to it the fact that essays need historical context, in answer writing you need to have an historical context. One of the best essays written by written by any topper is always when it has a holistic perspective. History opens up your mind. History gives you a three dig three sixty degree perspective. it gives you a multi dimensional perspective be it psir be it geography be it for example sociology or anthropology sociology anthropology psir all these are in a way derivative of history optional and the beauty of history optional syllabus is because i have taught in delhi university for 5 years ironically the history optional syllabus is the photocopy of delhi university syllabus exactly the same If you go back to, for example, twenty ten, twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen, if you look at the syllabus of history as honors, history honors, it will be the exactly the same as the history syllabus which has been put into the optional by UPSC. Last but not the least is predictability. The fact is, when it comes to the pattern and predictability, thematics repeat. You already know that out of, for example, Maurya there will be one question, Gupta there will be one question, Indus Valley there will be one question. World history one question out of French Revolution one question out of American Revolution, and at the end of the day, once you cover this, for example, with three sixty days three sixty hours with me, in one fifty days we cover the whole course. This can be covered by you within within sixty days. You can revise everything in between your prelims and your mains, which is equally important because a lot of interesting subjects take a lot of time to actually cover during this gap period in that regard. and therefore when we talk about history as an optional there there should be no debate that when we talk about the syllabus people say it is bulky but you have to cover that syllabus either way ancient medieval modern art and culture world history post independence all these six portions are automatically going to be covered by you because you have to cover it for prelims however when you are covering this for prelims and these four for mains once you cover history optional you are automatically covering all of those so the 100% intersectionality the what we call as input output is extremely positive for some students it matters that what is the success rate i'll tell you one more thing that when it comes to success rate you have you have a good hit rate with 7% of all students till until today we are getting 10 11 Twelve percent of students who appear with history optional are clearing. So therefore, because the, this number is based on the quantum of students who take history optional and how many get recommended, out of all students who are taking history optional, the best optional can always give you ten, fifteen, twelve, thirteen percent. Here it is eight to twelve percent bracket, and it doesn't really matter. It is about you. When it comes to do we have toppers out of history optional? Yes, we do. We have Shruti Sharma in twenty twenty one. Who got three hundred and six? This was her make and break. It is believed that it was history optional, being a Stephanian and being an alumna of the same institution which I come from, and being a history student. She was a B.A. on a student. She was able to nail the paper and become the topper. But it's not that others don't. She was the you know she was the UPSC topper that year. Over and above that, we have throughout the past ten to fifteen years, people scoring in the bracket of. 250 to 300 305 which is considered very very good so there should be again no debate with regards to the fact that history as an optional has multiple advantages every optional has an advantage and a disadvantage history as an optional has multiple advantages and the advantages outweigh the disadvantages 
See, people will say standard marking. That happens for PSIR also. That happens for political science also. That happens uh, what we call as public ad also. That happens for geography also. Standard marking. Then the, uh, the best thing is that here the paper is checked by university level professors. And the questions are coming from them also. And because I am teaching you at that level where I be in a way a lot of my teachers used to make the questions. The fact is that you will be able to write what they want. Specifically, historian names, historiography, and sources based understanding. The question paper is extremely analytical, and I'll try to give you an understanding of what the syllabus looks like. Now, before I go into the syllabus book list, I again want to reiterate a very, very important point that we are launching this course after multiple requests from you because when it comes to history optional, we don't have a reliable option. Even if there are options, they are too long, they are too lengthy, and they are extremely extremely difficult to follow. If you've been in class with me, if you already know me, you would know that I do not teach which and anything which is unnecessary. There will be an exam oriented understanding and 360 hours with 2.5 hours is the best sweet spot to actually learn history and make sure that your prelims is also cleared because prelims you will need history and your mains is also cleared so that everywhere from essay to GS paper 1 to GS paper 4 to 3 to 2 everywhere you can use this knowledge. Now, just to give you a basic taste of the syllabus, you need to understand one thing that the syllabus is quite similar in the sense, when we talk about ancient India, there's only one specific edition, which is sources. Other than that, other than that it is standard, which is prehistory, the concept of Indus Valley civilization, Prehistory would till be till Chalcolithic, Indus Valley Civilization, Mahajanpadas, Vedic Age, and thereafter Maurya, post Maurya, Gupta, post Gupta. If you've ever covered history for prelims, exactly same syllabus, except for a specific portion, portion of sources. So sources plus historians, which is history writing, which is called historiography, this is the only portion which is different. Same is true for medieval. When you do medieval, the whole syllabus is divided into centuries, which is 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th. Again, except for sources and historians, be it the Turkish invasion, be it Delhi Sultanate, Vijayanagara Bahamani, Mughal India, everything is the same. Exactly the same. What you cover may be at a lower level for prelims. Here we just have to have a descriptive understanding. Paper 1 is basically ancient and medieval and here you only the only difference is you do it for prelims factual portion conceptual here we need to have descriptive understanding when we talk about the paper two you have world and modern ironically modern india the whole syllabus is the same there are multiple questions in the gs paper one and in in history optional which can be done through gs level understanding itself Modern standard questions come, which sometimes don't even need an academic level understanding. And therefore, this is the easiest portion you can ever cover with just additions, for example, of 18th century, certain debates and historians. However, it is world history where things become a little bit more expanded. For example, when you do it for GS, you would have to do American Revolution, French Revolution, Unification of Germany, Italy, Industrial Revolution, the road to First World War, the interwar period. Thereafter, Second World War, Cold War. The difference here is that you would have to start with the same American Revolution, a little bit of American Constitution. Over and above that, little bit of what we call as the Civil War, which is important because therein comes the concept of slavery. British parliamentary democracy is one more section which is important. Basically, here we have to talk about the Chartist movement and what is the concept of how Parliament in Britain evolved in that sense. Thereafter, again, everything starts to intersect with the concept of nationalism, unification of Germany and Italy, and nationalism movements everywhere else. First World War, Second World totally intersects. Interwar period totally intersects. Till Cold War politics, there's a proper intersection with a little bit of emphasis on enlightenment and thinkers. Here we have to discuss Kant, we have to discuss, for example, Locke and Voltaire. That is the only portion which is different. And then the last portion where there is a difference is Colonization, decolonization. Colonization, decolonization, we generally do Africa and Southeast Asia. Here you would have to do Latin America and you would add 
the other continents also to make it more holistic. And last but not the least is from Gulf War forward, basically international relations part, which goes into international relations is covered here. Till the disintegration of the USSR 1992, everything is relevant. But again, I will tell you that if you do world history here, you will write beautiful answers for world history and IR in GS paper 2 and GS paper 1. So there is no fundamental difference. For example, in PSIR optional, there's a whole thinker section that is not relevant for GS. There will always be options in which, for example, in geography, there will be multiple sections which are not relevant for GS. However, in history, everything you cover for optional is automatically relevant for GS and GS is relevant for optional. This is an advantage in that sense. I will have a more structured discussion on how we are going to cover the whole syllabus in the special session which I take tomorrow. But the fact of the matter is, when it comes to the syllabus, it is exactly a photocopy of Delhi University syllabus of the honors and it has 100% intersectionality with your, your what we call as prelims and main syllabus. Thereafter comes the million dollar question book list. Now for you, if you are joining me, it is an irrelevant question because the number of books are quite big. It's quite a lot, but when you take my course, you don't have to worry about it because automatically you are going to get, you are going to get everything in one source. But just to give you an understanding for ancient India, for example, you would have to read Upinder Singh, Upinder Singh, History of Ancient and Early Medieval India. That is one of the most important books, even for NET and UPSC both. This book, along with R.S. Sharma, ironically, this intersects with again prelims and mains. And along with what we call as what we call as BK Jain, BK Jain is considered very, very important. So three books in ancient, but within it, Upinder Singh is a very, very bulky book in that sense. Thereafter in medieval, we have Satish Chandra, but you read Satish Chandra only one part that one book. There's also Satish Chandra, volume one, volume one and volume two. Along with that, you have the Vipul Singh book, which is also quite interesting and important. And you can supplement it. The problem is always in medieval. You have to supplement it with a lot of articles, which may not be available to you, but I already have. Thereafter, again, three books for medieval. For modern India, the only edition other than India's struggle for independence, Bipin Chandra, India, India, what we call as India since independence, Bipin Chandra. And you have other books, for example, uh, the BL Grovers and all. The only edition is Shekhar Bandopadhyaya because Shekhar Bandopadhyaya has the historiography of it. Now, again, that can be sorted without even reading Shekhar Bandopadhyaya. And we have collated these nine books total. We have here three to four. So three plus three plus three, close, close to nine to ten books you need for ancient, medieval and modern. Over and above that, for world history, you have KK Reddy, Royal Publications. Over and above that, you can read what we call as Norman Law. But the problem again emerges is that normal law starts from the First World War. Before that, you have to refer to books such as Merriman, which will not be accessible to you. But I have the book with regards to it's a BA honors level book, very interesting covers. Or for example, Arvind Sina, European Transition, that is also a good book in that regard. And to, together, it becomes a 12 to 13 set book. But again, all of this gets negated because I collate all of this and give it to you in one handout. That eight to nine page handout will cover everything relevant for that portion and you don't have to go anywhere else. So when it comes to the book list, there is a book list, you will find it everywhere. But the quantum of books as with regards to history, even GS is the same. Now, before I end the session, I want to tell you two things. First thing is that this course has been designed specifically to make sure that we do it in the most efficient manner possible with the best hand holding and the best answer writing practice you can get. Remember the code AMOPT because this will be needed to get a reduction in the fees, which is quite significant, close to 50% right now. And over and above that, I have also developed a telegram channel for you to which we can have a one-to-one -one conversation beyond the class itself. You can scan this QR code. You will be redirected to it. You can join the channel. This The uh, handle for it is history optional Abhishek or it is called history optional by Abhishek Mishra sir. You can use this. Over and above that, I have also, I have also 
in a way in a way done certain more sessions for you so that you can develop a certain understanding for that you have to come to the unacademy platform wherein on 17th 18th and 19th at 5 pm in the evening we'll have one session about the exact details of the course the syllabus we'll discuss everything here we'll be discussing the salient features and every minutest of details which have not been discussed here thereafter the strategy for scoring 300 plus marks and on 19th friday 5 pm basically i'll be covering neolithic from a perspective of history optional to show you what is the difference and how easy it is so this is also the all three sessions the link is given in the description box you so you can refer to that also now before i end i want to firstly thank you for encouraging us for encouraging me to bring in this program because i have been getting multiple requests from you we need a good history optional course and here i am with that second from 22nd we start our classes so i hope that you will join before that and use the code a m o p t so that you can also get a reduction in the course price and last but not the least is if you have even 1% interest in history with the level of expertise i have and the way you have already seen i teach gs history option is going to be the best decision you will take for yourself and maybe this will be make and break for you in the larger perspective with this i would like to end the session all links with regards to the special session the telegram channel and the course everything is in the description box do refer to them and see you in class thank you take care bye bye